Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we are going to be converting my TBS Discovery. We're going to be using the long range system by uh, Easy UHF. And uh, we will also be changing the 5.8 video transmitter to a 2.4. We're also going to add a mini IOSD in there. To do that we need to put a PMU V2 in there. So that's what we're going to do today. So I'm going to try and make this video short and still give you the information that you need. Previously I've been flying this TBS Discovery using Futaba's T8 FG Super at 2.4GHz. Now I'm going to be swapping out the receiver for Immersion RC's long range 433MHz. As you can see this also comes with diversity antennas. I removed the NASA light flight controller and when I did I noticed that there had been some sort of rubbing, probably due to the heavy battery that was inside, so I covered this over with some tape. Rather than going and buying a brand new NASA V1 flight controller, I decided to remove the one that I had in my DJI F450. This is just the comparison, you got the NASA light on the top and the NASA MV1 on the bottom. The light is much more cheaper. Because I was using the Immersion RC receiver, I had to set it up in the traditional method using all of these servo cables. This is not my preferred way of installing the receiver, I prefer S-Bus personally. If you're bored, skip to 5 minutes 30 to see the actual long range test of this system. Here I'm installing the NASA V1. It's easy to find the centre of gravity as it is marked out on the bottom plate. I decided to mount the PMU V2 on top of the NASA flight controller. I soldered the cables from the PMU straight onto the soldering tabs for the ESCs. Here is my Team Black Sheep 2.4GHz video transmitter and this is my 5V UBEC which I am going to use to power it. Take note of the large SMA connector at the top there. I actually had a problem with mine and it snaps off, you'll see that later on in this video. But for now you can see this as a side comparison side by side with the Team Black Sheep 2.4GHz and the Immersion RC 5.8GHz. Here I'm just tinning all my wires, getting it ready to connect to the IOSD Mini. I decided to use the IOSD Mini for this TBS frame because there's not a lot of room inside and also I don't like too much clutter on my screen of the OSD. My two year old son George came to help me. I can't wait for him to grow up so he can start flying with me too. As you can see, he's already enjoying his RC cars. Something's gone terribly wrong. <laughs> Where's the fire extinguisher? <coughs> I got it in the back of my throat. This was going to be the maiden of my TBS long range system. But as you can see, I was having some problems. The front left ESC was actually sparking and starting to smoke. I had to remove this ESC and replace it with a brand new one. It's actually the first time I've ever had an ESC break on me, so it's actually made me a little bit wary of flying. So after a couple of setbacks, this is now my maiden flight using the 433 MHz long range system. As you can see by the timer, I was up to 11 minutes. But I noticed that the voltage was dropping very quickly on my transmitter, so I added the 12 volt battery on the back of this to power the Easy UHF. So here I was set up to do my first long range flight. As you can see, I'm using the TBS Yagi antenna. It's all connected to a TBS receiver and a 7 inch screen. But as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that gold SMA connector actually snapped off before I even got a chance to get it up in the air. But I hadn't drove all this way not to fly, so I decided to fly over the marshlands. And as you can see, an inquisitive Cheshire cat decided to join me. The next day I got hold of another TBS 2.4GHz video transmitter off a friend that had previously broken, so I stripped it for parts and fixed my one. 
then I headed back out to do the long range flight. So this is the start of my long range flight, as you can see there will be three cameras, the top left is the camera that I was going to narrate to you, but as you will see, I get plenty of people coming around and ask me tons of questions, but I never really got a chance to narrate during the flight because everyone was around me and talking to me. The camera on the top right hand side is what I was actually seeing live, it is recording on my DVR that is connected to my ground station. This will enable us to see the IOSD Mini and also any breakups in the video whilst we're actually flying. That beeping that you can hear is actually my LiPo alarm, it seems to be going off prematurely. I decided to leave it on the TBS anyway, in case the TBS went into the marshland I'll be able to find it using the sound. I was aware that I was flying with the wind here, you can see I'm actually going up to 19 meters per second. So I knew it was going to be a little bit harder to come back as I will be flying into the wind. This white building coming up is actually the 1000 meter mark. This tree line on the right hand side is my previous record of 1,400 meters. As you can see I'm now at 1590 meters, to get to the mile I need to go over 1610, which I have just done. I reach a maximum of 1638 meters away from my home point, I decide to start heading back which is in the direction of that little diamond on the IOSD. As you can tell by the sound, I'm actually heading into the wind. This can also be verified by looking at the speed on the IOSD Mini. I'm actually doing 12.4 meters per second instead of 19 meters per second that I was doing in the opposite direction. This is my preferred location to fly. Over these marshlands I know if I'm going to go down or there's a problem, I'm not going to hit any buildings. Unfortunately the water you do see below is actually salt water so if I do crash into there, any chance of being able to save the electronics is very slim.
it's always a great relief to get your quad back after doing a long range flight like this. You may notice that the actual video on the IOST is actually breaking up a little bit. This is because I am directly behind the Yagi antenna. This is a typical scenario for any quadcopter pilot. Normally when you are out, people will be walking by and wondering what you're doing. I'm happy to show them and let them look at the screen and see where I'm flying and answer all their questions. This guy was quite nice and he's an ex-pilot himself. I think he said his name was Jim and he used to come down here and fly his RC model planes. It's always nice to meet a fellow RC enthusiast. He asked if he could take a picture of the quad and surely I obliged. His son is also interested in RCs and has started flying RC helicopters. Anyway, that's it for now guys. I appreciate you coming along and flying with me for my first ever long range flight. I know it was only a mile, but it is a milestone for me. Thanks for watching guys, I'll have plenty more videos coming up soon. I just want to give a big shout out to the guys at quadcopters.co.uk for helping me out with my TBS discovery. I also want to thank the guys over there ATI in the US. These guys helped me out a lot with my GoPro Hero Black Edition. Thank you so much guys, I wouldn't be able to keep up this hobby without you. Just one other thing guys, a couple of weeks ago I ordered from Hobby King the new Pulse Jet engine, which has just arrived so that video will be coming up very soon.